Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, government and the World Bank signed two agreements expected to benefit homeowners, farmers and fisher folk. CARICOM heads move to bring down the cost of regional travel. And in sports, Dominica Football Association prepares for third major outside competition this year. The details coming up. MJ Covering is the producer of designed galvanize and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. First up in the news, a number of agreements signed between Dominica and the World Bank on Thursday totaling 65 million US dollars. That's about 175 million EC. Prime Minister Skerritt and the World Bank representatives signed contracts to propel post-Maria initiatives for the agriculture and housing sectors. 40 million will be allocated to housing. 1,700 families will receive assistance for rebuilding. 25 million US is allocated to agriculture. 4,900 farmers and fishers will receive support under the agriculture program to help restore livelihoods in that sector and introduce and adopt climate resilient practices. In more news now, government continues to inject millions into post-Hurricane Maria reconstruction efforts. But Prime Minister Skerritt, who has taken up the housing portfolio, says he recognizes that as the task of rebuilding continues, the island is also on the verge of another hurricane season. Mr. Skerritt says lessons learned from Hurricane Maria are being incorporated into efforts to build back in a more resilient way. So while we are rebuilding, we also are on the, the dawn of another hurricane season. And we have met in the cabinet along with the various government officials to start to ensure that we have systems in place, taking into consideration the challenges which we had during uh, Maria and see how we can correct and address some of those challenges uh, towards this. There are still many homes that are, are still without a roof. This government has approved thus far with its own resources about 50 million EC dollars and an additional 20 million EC dollars will be approved by the Minister of Finance today to continue to assist residents with their roofing. We've also taken a decision and we're hoping to sign the agreement to the, the uh, Government Housing Loan Board and the Aid Bank to put in $5 million each to these institutions to unlend to public and private sector citizens at 2% with a maximum borrowing of $50,000 to assist them with um, fixing their homes. $17 million has been spent on building materials procured for homeowners to assist with reconstruction. The Prime Minister has thanked the World Bank for its support of Dominica's efforts towards becoming the world's first climate resilient nation. He has also acknowledged the critical role that the World Bank's emergency fund played in terms of helping farmers and fishers renew their determination following Maria. We want to thank the World Bank for making the funds available because this provided tremendous motivation uh, to the farming community. And I am satisfied, based on my moving across the country, that farmers utilize the money on the farms. Mm -hmm. And I really want to thank the farmers who received, and the fisher folk who received these funds. And, and, and for putting, investing this money into the farms. $10,000 for a farmer uh, is a, a significant sum, and it can make a huge difference um, in terms of your earnings. And I'm very happy for this, and uh, we want to thank again the World Bank for this. One of the things the minister may not have mentioned is that we have started, and he may have mentioned it, we have started exporting fresh agricultural produce to the region. Right. 
crops planted after the hurricane. Shipments started leaving Dominica in the last, in, I think in, in, in November, December of 2017. And the increasing numbers of agricultural produce leaving the country. A two-day sensitization campaign on the results-based management RBM system got underway in Dominica on Thursday. The CARICOM Gender Sensitive Results-Based Management RBM system is being established as a planning, monitoring, evaluating and reporting system for the region. The progress that we have seen um, is one. We do have uh, the input from our regional institutions because we have had several meetings with the funding coming from the CDB, that's the Caribbean Development uh, Bank, and um, of course also member states' input. We have a consultant who is also assisting us and who actually is quite experienced in our region because he has assisted many member states and some of the regional organizations in developing their RBM system. So we have some best practices. And uh, we are now heading towards um, finalizing the system. And that's why 2019 is our target to start to implement the RBM system. CARICOM heads of government had taken the decision to monitor the implementation of the Caribbean Community Five-Year Strategic Plan 2015-2019 with the use of the RBM system. We are now populating the PMF, Popular Known Performance Measurement Framework, um, with the baselines and the targets, which is very important because the baseline is quite important because you will be able to know where you're coming from, so you will determine whether or not you're making progress and then you'll also be able to determine whether or not you're going in the right direction. Because another thing about a monitor and evaluation system is that it tests the efficacy of your strategies. Funding for the RBM system came from the Caribbean Development Bank in the amount of 600,000 US dollars. The local area management authority for the Sufre Scotshead Marine Reserve has made a case for a jetty, justifying it will be useful for evacuation during disasters. The communities among the hardest hit by Hurricane Maria were cut off as a result of landslides, causing relief supplies to be brought to residents by boat. One of the interventions by the local area management authority was to propose to the German Agency for International Cooperation funding for a jetty. We told them, listen. If all you have to do anything for the people of the community, as uh, Sufian Scott said, we just give a jetty. Provide the financing for a jetty. They have already written to Lama and they have indicated that they were able to get from their stakeholders at least 2 million US to spend to help Dominica and more so Scott said, restore our marine entity. Because they're also looking at the possibility of having a floating jetty in Scott said. Most of the negotiation, most of the talks are going on with the with the government heads, the Ministry of Tourism, the fisheries, because Lama we are just we are just a small arm. But the larger arm is the fisheries department, the Ministry of Agricultural Fisheries and the Cabinet. And well most of the Palweb. Charles says it would be wise for that project to advance coming from the lessons of Hurricane Maria's impact. Whenever there's a major disaster or storm, just name it, the roads are cut out. Once you have heavy rain or wind, roads are cut out and communication is eliminated because you cannot move. So the option there is out via the sea and a jetty would play a crucial role to get the people out of the community in case you have a, a situation where you need to get people, especially the senior folks. They have already done the scouting, you know, as to the area, the location, and they're looking at the area that is between the the old fisheries building where um, Weefers Juice sells the, you know, the steam fish, right in close to the Lama building there, close to the Lama office, right there on the just on the Sufia shoreline. That is the area that, that has been allocated. You're watching Channel 5 News. The news will continue after this.
When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Thank you for staying with us. CARICOM heads of government have taken a decision to reduce the cost of travel within the grouping. This is the aim of the Multilateral Air Services Agreement, MASA, which was signed earlier this year by member states. For several years, CARICOM nationals have cried down the high cost of air travel among other member countries, and Director of the Strategic Management Unit within the CARICOM Secretariat says the signing of the MASA paves the way to revamp the transportation sector within the region. One of the initiatives that we undertook, which was very important for free movement of people, is to determine what it is that we need to do to reduce the cost of travel. Because within a region, it is cheaper to go to Miami than to go to some Caribbean countries, and we're talking about free movement of people. So in that respect, only this year, the heads of government signed off on what we call a MASA, which is a multilateral air service agreement, which allows for a revamping of the transportation sector, not just air travel, but also sea travel. Beresford says attaining lower travel cost would augur well for economic development among CARICOM member states. He pointed out that progress on this intervention will be monitored using the results-based management or RBM system. Travel in terms of movement of goods, because that's very important also. Because if you can get goods cheaper in your, con in your region from outside, viz from our own partners, our own brothers and sisters, it will all come down to a business decision because it's what is cheaper for the consumer. So the RBM system seeks to identify clearly the results associated with the interventions at various levels. And the Minister for Agriculture says strengthening capacity within commercial and subsistence farming will help position the agriculture sector where it rightly belongs. Addressing a signing ceremony by the World Bank and government on Thursday, the Minister for Agriculture said that sector was not receiving the credit it deserves for its role in the growth of the economy. The Minister spoke in the context of the signing of two agreements with the World Bank, one for agriculture and the other for housing. So we see with this 25 million US dollars, a repositioning of the, the, the Ministry of Agriculture and a change in the structures both in terms of the human resource capacity that exists, the limited among that exists, and in terms of how we articulate and how we structure the farms. Like for example, you have commercial farmers and subsistence farmers eating from the same pot, so to speak. This, this cannot be right. They have to be treated differentially, that you have to pay special attention to your commercial farmers, which will feed your export market and bring your foreign exchange, while the subsistence farmers will be given the challenge to, to feed the nation and to provide us with the food security that is necessary. Hurricane Maria is estimated to have caused damage estimated at $1.3 billion. And Dominica has been praised for becoming the model country from which a fine-tuned joint emergency cash transfer program will be executed in other countries which suffer catastrophic disasters. Dominica was also commended for being the first country to get two United Nations powerhouses to partner up in the wake of a natural disaster. The World Food Programme and UNICEF signed the first ever cooperation agreement last week after they successfully executed the three-month-long joint emergency cash transfer program. As resident coordinator, I'm extremely proud of the way that the UN system worked together uh, to, under the coordination of the government, to support the people uh, of Dominica uh, in the immediate response and in the recovery process. I'm particularly pleased with this project because it brought together uh, two cornerstone agencies within the UN system, both of whom have an extremely high degree of, of knowledge and were able to combine that knowledge 
in a, in a program that uh, implemented by the government that was uh, implemented through the government that was able to deliver support to 25,000 people. Stakeholders spent two days assessing and fine-tuning the Joint Emergency Cash Transfer Program to help Dominica on its climate resilience path and for use in the wider Caribbean and Latin America regions. This experience also raises very important questions for the future. How does some, a tool such as having a shock-resistant social uh, protection system contribute, and how can it contribute, to Dominica's goal of being a climate-resilient nation? What, is, what, what are the ways that we can make this kind of a tool work towards that aim? How can a tool like this interact with existing financial systems in the region. So how does it tie together, for example, with, uh, with the CRIF? How does it tie together uh, with, the, with the support offered, for example, through the Caribbean Development Bank? And ultimately, and, and also, how do these tools complement what we normally think of or what we traditionally think of as preparedness activities? The Joint Emergency Cash Transfer Program was launched in December 2017 and disbursed over $8 million to thousands of vulnerable Dominicans. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. And now the close of a chapter here at Mapping News. About two and a half years ago, a young man joined the Mapping News team with very little prior experience in the field of television news reporting, but Kenny Williams was determined and stuck with it. Today, it's with a heavy heart that we, the news production team, are saying goodbye. And no, he was not fired. Kenny believes the time has come for him to move on, and he's about to do just that. I started off um, working at Mapping with very little, probably no experience in media. And um, I guess my, um, my time at Mapping, I guess, serves as testament that, you know, if you are dedicated enough, um, you can still come in in, a, in an area that you're not probably um, familiar with and still be able to handle yourself. Of course, I couldn't do it on my own. I had the support of my um, newsroom staff. And, um, you know, being trained by, uh, by you, of course, uh, Andrea and um, Edona, Lurian, of course, even getting feedback from cameramen, um, from those um, working in the, in the video editor's room and so on, um, helped groom me into um, what I am now. Um, I was able to, I remember, you know, starting off doing a lot of preview sessions <laughs> um, and then going on the studio floor, doing the, um, reading the script from the prompter and all of that, and then to the point where people meet me on the road and tell me like, you know, you're really good at what you do and whatever. And for me, I still thought that there was a lot of room for improvement because um, while people would tell me that on the street that, hey, you're doing well, um, still getting feedback from my colleagues and stuff. And all of that helped um, groom me, I guess, um, throughout my time at Mapping. Talk a little bit about your, your high, high points and, and, and if there are any lows. I don't recall, I don't know about the lows, but the high points and the... Well, I mean, it's interesting because um, anywhere you, you go to work, of course, you will experience in, um, challenges. You will not always have the smooth road. And it was no exception for me. It was no different for me in that um, there, were, there were times when, I mean, if I'm just being honest, I didn't feel like making it to work because it was like so much pressure sometimes, but it's like still being able to come through and, and um, do what is required of me. You know, as a sports reporter, I mean, remember doing, um, going to, to Windsor Park when West Indies came here for the first time. That was a very um, exciting experience for me, seeing those stars you'd see on TV for the first time. Um, of course, on Dominican soil, um, hosting um, programs and even going on news. I mean, like, a lot of people don't understand the amount of pressure that you have to go through, you know, to um, anchor news, so to speak. And um, yeah, like I said, with, with the support of everyone that, that was working in my department or even um, through a mapping by extension, well, now Flo, um, you know, I was able to still go on and, and do my best. How do you think you've, the experience has helped you grow as a person? 
on prof and professionally? Well, I think um, Mapina has tested my patience. Um, allow me to explain what I mean by that. Um, it has allowed me to see just how much I could handle. Um, there are a lot of times, and like I said, if every, if anywhere that you work, you will experience um, pressure. Um, there were a lot of challenging situations at Mapping, but um, you know, I was still able to pull through. And I think um, the example, I guess, that I, I am leaving behind for others is that, hey, it doesn't matter what you might go through. A lot of people don't know, but like in the, in the space of what, two years approximately, I lost both my parents, but uh, well, I lost my parents, but um, you wouldn't look at me and know that that's, that's the case. But you know, just, just my message is that just stay positive and um, you know, treat people well, because you never know um, who you might end up um, coming up against or, or encountering in your future because a lot of times people tend to um, treat people in a way that, that is kind of like it seems like you're beneath them or something like that but you know always always treat people well. This is Kenny's final sportscast with Mapping Channel 5 News. On behalf of the entire production team I want to wish Kenny success and happiness on his new journey. Well, that's news. Coming up, Kenny Williams with his final sportscast. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise Imports Map, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years' experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies, and check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. First up in sports, Dominica Football Association is in preparation mode for its third major outside competition this year. Following the successful end of the inaugural Under-15 Girls Tournament last month, DFA is putting things in place to arm the girls with the required skills to be competitive at the CONCACAF Championship in August. That um, competition went well. I mean, the, the Football Association had to look at um, getting various um, teams, you know, about four different teams, so that we could have um, games among them and selected a, a, a squad from, from that. We've done that. What we are now in, in training for August, um, where it's going to be the under 15 women tournament in Orlando, Florida. So that tournament again is a, a, a eye opener for young persons in Dominica. He encouraged clubs to do more for budding footballers since the DFA cannot do it alone. What we would encourage, what we would want in the future is the clubs to take on this responsibility of having an under 15 women and boys um, team attached to their, their club. I mean, with, that's the reason why we are into the club structure. Um, we, can, we expect the clubs to have their attachment, um, the under 15 boys, the under 15 ladies, because next year we, we are definitely going to have, an, well this year, sorry, we're going to have an under 15 league and I want to encourage the clubs to start working in the community to make sure that youngsters are attached to the club because the, the DFB is one of the um, association competing in all the events at CONCACAF, you must see. So we are even actually doing the under 14 boys in, in, in St. Kitts in August of this year, that's a CFU. And that's a quali uh, not a qualifier, but it's an eye-opener, if you want to say, to the CONCACAF under 15 boys next year in Orlando. Next up, following its success at the 2018 Commonwealth Games, DOC is targeting two more major competitions later this year. Head of the organization remains optimistic about the athletes' chances ahead of the Central America and Caribbean and the Youth Olympic Games. Well, right now we are in um, preparatory mode for the CAC Games, that is the Central America and Caribbean Games, which will be held in Colombia. Um, that's from the um, from July 19th to August 3rd. And then we have, in October, we have the Youth um, Olympic Games in Argentina. So these are the two major sports meets that we are, we are um, 
I'm preparing for now. He says Dominica's results at the 2018 Commonwealth Games were crucial learning experiences in his stint as DOC president. We're having a review of, of, of the Commonwealth Games um, because it was a very successful game for us. Um, it was a wonderful occasion, it was a learning experience for many of us because many of us, it was the first time that we had um, participated at, at games at that level um, in, in our capacity and um, it was a tremendously um, the, the learning curve for us, and we learned a lot from it, from, from those games. It, I said it was very successful games. Meantime, head of the DOC has repeated a call for the establishment of a synthetic track here. Against the background of Dominica's two meddling performances at the Commonwealth Games, Dr. Ove noted the importance of investment in athletes. Both Tia Lafon and Yordanis Garcia are overseas-based athletes who have access to better training facilities than what is available locally. We all know what happened to Dominica last year and we, we have to put our priorities right. But we're all aware that a track is, 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 is inevitable and it is paramount to for the progress and development of, of our fleets. So we are in the process of setting up a, a meeting with the, with, the, with, the, with the government to, again, sensitize them to the importance of that track. I think that they themselves are aware of it um, because they have already identified lands. So, and the monies basically uh, are, are there. The, 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 we had this, during the Commonwealth Games, we had discussion, um, the Secret, Secretary General and, um, and the manager of the team and myself had discussions with Lord Sebastian Coe, the, the, um, the, the president of the, of the International Athletics Federation. And um, we had a very fruitful meeting with him. So he's aware and, and everybody's aware, past, so he's aware the Olympic Committee, International Olympic Committee is aware that um, we need that track, but we are aware that we cannot challenge, we cannot consistently challenge the, um, the other countries in terms of their performances without our own track and without um, improving our facilities. So this is an area that we, um, we are aware of and we're really pushing for that. Next up, DFA aims to make football more popular among the youth and by so doing ensuring a level of continuity in the sport. This according to DFA boss Glenn Etienne who explains the association is aware of the turnover rate in the sport and is putting things in place to assist in that regard. Proof of that was the recently launched grassroots program among communities here where DFA staff taught the fundamentals of the game to primary school students and teachers. We want that every kid in Dominica at least plays football no matter where they come from. And we have improved that. We've launched three different areas of grassroots. We've done the first at Marigot, which is not really a, a football per se, but to tell you that there was a lot of talent down there. And we saw the, the, the interesting persons like the teachers involved. Then we moved to Cassie Bruce, um, and then we moved last weekend to Laplin. It has not stopped for us. We will do some in the south, maybe at Bagatelle or Granby, one of these areas, and then do something in the, in the Rosa Central area. So we understand really the, full of the development of football at the DFA, um, and that is all in all to gear the, the clubs again to have a, a youth arm program. Because yes, you have a premier a club, but at the end of it, they, they, they have to live one day. I mean, with that sports, you know, they, they, they got to fit out, they got to age, and we don't want that when the, 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 the senior boys at Dublin or Point Michel or Southeast or Harlem goes that we have a dilemma, a little breakdown in our continuation. So we are putting everything in place that to make sure that the continuity is, is, is there. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Be sure to join us next time. more cash for that home improvement? Then come to Fast Cash, where we give you more. At Fast Cash, our customers get more funds and more time to repay. But wait, can't come to us? We'll come to you, and our mobile officer will get you on your way. Small businesses, consumers, and taxi owners, Fast Cash has more for everyone. Simply call or visit any of our locations for more. Smarter, faster, better, Fast Cash. Terms and conditions apply. To end the news, the headlines again, government and the World Bank signed two agreements expected to benefit homeowners 
farmers and fisher folk. CARICOM heads move to bring down the cost of regional travel. And in sports, Dominica Football Association prepares for third major outside competition this year. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.